I've made a few references to the Ricky Gervais podcast with Sam Harris. It's the Sam Harris podcast where Ricky Gervais was a guest. Recently, Ricky Gervais has made many tweets about defending free speech and the right to joke about things. And in this podcast, Ricky makes a really interesting point. He said, can you believe that there are people calling, uh, claiming doctors are fat shaming them? Doctors. Seriously, he's trying to save your life. Could you imagine cancer shaming someone? Like, I can't believe it. The doctor said I had cancer. That's, I'm, I'm offended. Well, yeah, you've got cancer. He's trying to, to, to treat you and, and keep you healthy. It's the absurdity of woke 2019 that, yes, we literally have stories where doctors are getting in trouble for trying to be accurate in science. And here's the, here's the next story. I, I, I kid you not. UK doctor claims he was fired for rejecting gender fluid pronouns. Dr. David McArith claims he was fired for his refusal to call any six foot tall bearded man, madam, on his whim. Apparently that's the quote. Listen, I'm all about respecting people. I, I have actually uh, no problem referring to someone with their preferred pronoun. I really don't care, man. It, it means nothing to me. You can call me whatever you want. Call me Susan if it makes you happy. I don't care. Okay. I will try to accommodate others to the, best, to the best of my ability, but don't get mad at me if I don't know your pronoun and certainly don't fire a doctor when he wants to refer to you as the medically accurate term, which apparently is what happened. This story from human events. Now, before we get started, head over to timcast.com slash donate. If you'd like to support my work, there's a PayPal option, a crypto option, a physical address. But of course, the best thing you can do, just share this video. YouTube doesn't, doesn't recommend independent creators. Um, I'm sorry, they don't suggest independent creators anymore. They still recommend some sometimes. A lot of people don't seem to understand there's a difference. It means they're not promoting my content as much, so I ask you to do it. But let's read the story. From uh, Human Events, Ian Miles Chong writes, a British doctor has been sacked from his government job following his refusal to refer to a hypothetical person described as a six-foot-tall bearded man with feminine pronouns. Dr. David McArath, a 56-year-old assessor at the UK's Department of Work and Pensions told an employment tribunal that he believes he was fired for his religious beliefs. He alleges that the topic of transgenderism and gender fluidity came up in a conversation with a line manager who asked him, if you have a, if you have a man six foot tall with a beard who says he wants to be addressed as she and Mrs., would you do that? I'm going to stop here. I would. I don't care, man. If you came to me and said you want to be called the Banana King, I'll call you the Banana King, man. <laughs> it's not, it's no sweat off my back. I just don't think people should be compelled to do it. There's a difference between respecting someone and oppressing someone. There's a difference between asking someone to respect you and then forcing them to do, do so by damaging their lives. Let's, it, it's, 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 see, the difference is freedom versus leftism. Okay, These woke social justice types are authoritarian. I am still kind of a social justice type. Except I don't believe you should force people to do things, and we can all we can all stand to grow up a little bit and stop getting so angry and offended at everything. I would say this: I actually prefer and w would request people use you know whatever name or pronoun someone asks you to within reason. I think a lot of the made up pronouns kind of cross cross uh, the line because it's getting weird. You can't have 500 pronouns. You're trying to teach someone English; they're going to be confused. But look, man. If you came to me and said, can you refer to me as, you know, Wubu Babo? I'd be like, you got it, Wubu Babo. I, I, I don't care. Call you the Banana King. I'll call you, you know, um, Lord Farquaad or uh, Shazira, leader of the forest elves. It doesn't mean anything to me, man. It, it doesn't. I can understand that some people th find it silly, but the real issue here is authoritarianism, plain and simple. Now, by all means, look, I'm not saying you, you, uh, the point I'm making is if you're someone on the right who completely disagrees with this, well, by all means, don't say someone's pronouns. It's a free country. You can speak what you want. No one can force you to do it. This, I believe, is, is, is uh, it's in the UK where they don't have free speech and they are forced to do it. So let's, uh, let's read on. The medic, who has 30 years of medical experience, secured a job as a health and disability assessor in Birmingham last May. The Telegraph reports that Macarith, who now works as an emergency doctor, is now suing both the DWP and APM the recruitment company that hired him for discrimination on religious grounds. The lawsuit is supported by the Christian Legal Center. The company claims that his views are not compatible with human dignity. Macrath claims that he was let go that following June after an email exchange with his manager, James Owens, for refusing to call any six foot tall bearded man madam on his whim, describing it as an interrogation. The doctor claims his boss told him that it was overwhelmingly likely he would lose his job unless he complied. complied. The email presented to the court read, 
If, however, you do not want to do this, we will respect your decision and your right to leave your contract. I am a, uh, Macrith replied, I am a Christian and in good conscience cannot do what the DWP is requiring of me. And once again, we can see the clash of so- social justice and civil liberties. I did an inter, I did a discussion with David Pakman. It was really interesting. I, I actually find that I'm to the left of David on the issue of uh, social justice and civil liberties in that I believe religious uh, uh, beliefs should be protected. Mostly because while I understand ideology is a hard thing to protect, we already have this enshrined and we should probably keep it where it is. But David said he wasn't so sure that religions should be a, protect, a protected class. I think the reason it should be and the reason it's important is that when you have Christians and Muslims and Jews all living in the same place, and there is a history of violence between these religious factions, they must, they must be able to live together. And we need an overarching system that says you can't discriminate against them because they believe something different than you. I think it's a good thing. I believe that if you're Christian and you go into, say, like a, a Muslim-owned bakery, they can't turn you away because you're Christian. That would be wrong and kind of scary. And that's why it is scary that political beliefs fall into a similar category because it is still at, at its root an ideology. I don't know how to expand this, but I do think it's, it's a difficult space to navigate. The point I want to make, if you're a Christian and it says God created, Ad, God created Adam and Eve, you believe there are two genders because the Bible says so, Adam and Eve, and the Bible actually you know, has other uh, um, you know, things within it, not just the Bible, but the Quran, the Torah as well. Will you then be forced to, to claim there is a third gender? Or otherwise, if the Bible says Adam and Eve, that's your religious belief. Can someone force you to violate that and speak something? So the UK, again, doesn't have free speech. In the US, it's interesting because you have a First Amendment right to not be compelled to speak, which creates a, a protection for us, which is an overall, overall good thing. But what we're seeing in the U.S. is the outsourcing of, pub, of the commons to private companies, which then allow for discrimination based on protected classes. It's actually a really interesting thing, and, and I'll go into more detail, too. Um, when talking with David Peckman, he brought up a really interesting point. I claimed that Twitter has a protection that allows them to be biased against, say, the LGBT community. And he said that's not true. They've not, they have no right to ban someone simply for being gay but they can ban you for promoting the idea. And that was an interesting distinction. I said, ah, oh, that's a good point. Being a Christian is different from speaking a Christian belief. So the question would that be, if you went to a bakery and you said something about the Lord, our God, and you said, I believe God this, and that's why I'm going to buy an orange juice. And they kicked you out for saying that. Would, would that be discrimination based on being a Christian? Or could they simply say he was being loud and disruptive? Things get rather complicated. So the issue then with social media networks, I don't, I don't want to go too, too, much, too much on this one, is that they're banning ideas, which is interesting because religion is a set of ideas. So where is the line being drawn? And can you force someone to express an idea? The reason I bring this up is uh, Twitter, Facebook, or otherwise, these social, social media giants claim they can't be compelled to host someone's speech. But let's read on. They write, if something like that happened in, uh, okay, so the, doc- the doctor says he, doesn't, he did not resign his position and is instead the victim of discrimination and harassment. He told the court, the very fact a doctor can be pulled off the shop floor for an urgent interrogation about his beliefs on gender fluidity is both absurd and very sinister, even more so if it results in dismissal. If something like that happened in a church setting, people being pulled out of a pew, questioned, and then excommunicated, that would be seen as an outrageous example of religious intolerance and bigotry. They go on to say that Macarith, a self-described unashamed Christian and trained theologian, told the Birmingham Tribunal, that his contract was terminated not because of any realistic concerns over the rights and sensitive sensitivities of transgender individuals, but because of my refusal to make an abstract ideological pledge. The doctor's lawsuit blurs the lines between transsexuality and the concept of gender fluidity, a new form of gender identity that now falls under LGBTQ plus umbrella. If you believe in gender fluidity, gender is no more than one's own fantasy about oneself, said the doctor. He called it a delusional belief. It is only recently that transgenderism has been recognized as normal and such delusional beliefs accepted at face value. That is what is responsible for that change is political pressure, not scientific evidence. Well, I agree with the scientific evidence thing to an extent, but there is some psychological stuff and it's it's a complicated issue. Look, I don't care if you walk around dressed like a clown juggling bananas all day. Just don't throw bananas at me, right? 
We have a right to live and let live, and you can call yourself whatever you want, be it transgender, transracial, furry, whatever, man. The problem is when they force it on other people, and that's what we're seeing, and that's what's dangerous. Final point. Thanks for hanging out. Next segment will be tomorrow at 10 a.m. on this channel, the podcast every day at 6.30, and I will see you all next time.